Welcome to 4C Visions. I'm your host, R.V. Height, Director of Communications at Central Carolina Community College. In this edition of 4C Visions, it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Linda Scaletti, CCCC Vice President of Assessment, Planning and Research, and Stormy Massatelli, CCCC Director of Institutional Effectiveness and Research. Dr. Scaletti's experience encompasses faculty, staff, and administrative roles at two community colleges, as well as experience as a manufacturing engineer in several industries. In her current role, she leads the college's accreditation efforts. She holds doctoral and master's degrees in adult education from NC State University and a bachelor's degree in mechanical and industrial engineering from the University of Notre Dame. Dr. Scaletti's work focuses on the use of assessment, data analytics to uncover and foster strategies for continuous improvement in institutional quality and student success. Stormy Massatelli has experience working in the Registrar's Office, Career Services, Advising, and Accreditation and Institutional Research. She earned her Master's in College Student Affairs Administration from the University of Georgia and her bachelor's in communication from Western New England University. Stormy focuses on making reliable and accurate data, data accessible to assist in continuous improvement and student success college-wide. Well, Linda and Stormy, welcome to 4C Visions. Thank you very much, RV. It's very, very exciting to be here with you. Great. And Stormy, Thank it's you. good to have you. Thank you. And we're excited to be with you. Well, Central Carolina Community College recently had its accreditation reaffirmed by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on Colleges, known as SACS. This is a tremendous accomplishment. What is the role of SACS and why is it important for CCCC or any college to have its accreditation affirmed? RV, accreditation and the accreditation process establishes a foundation for high quality standards and continuous improvement in service to our students. So just like any of us who went to college or any of us who will send our own children to college, we wanna make sure that every college uh, has an accreditation agency making sure they meet those high quality standards. It's, it's very important, but the accreditors are also the gatekeeper for federal funds. So a high percentage of our students have federal financial aid including Pell Grants and we are only authorized um, to award those financial aid Pell Grants because we are accredited by SAC COC. Well CCCC received the highest possible marks from its recent reaccreditation. Just how long was the reaccreditation process? <laughs> That is a great question. Um, I think formally the process started with SAC COC about two years before the reaffirmation actually took place. Um, but I'd say within the college, we started much, much earlier than that. Um, and something that we always say in our office, and Linda, I'm sure you agree, is that uh, accreditation is a continuous process. So you know we don't really start and stop. It's something that we uh, consider every day, and we talk with faculty and staff about every day. And I think we're really good here at CC about doing that. Well, what was the reaccreditation process like and the work that went into this process? Uh, it was extremely, extremely fulfilling because the entire thing is focused on continuous improvement. So the accreditation process looks at everything we do, every corner of the college, and asks us to assess how we're doing and how could we be doing better. Um, and so it's a way that we can contribute to helping our college be the very best it can be. Yeah. I'd say it was really motivating as well um, to hear stories from our faculty and staff and hear what the, the faculty are doing to make improvements um, in the way they teach and how students learn. So I think it was a very motivating process for me as well. I would love to brag on your next guest on this very show, Ginger, uh, and she is the department chair for education. We have an assessment process where every department has to identify what they're supposed to be doing, what their students are supposed to be learning, and then measure how well the students are learning that, and then plan ways to improve that. We call it close the loop. 
for the next year. And our faculty and staff are so creative and every single one of them finds ways to improve student learning. And Ginger had a, a, a wonderful idea. She had a huge project that her students had to complete as a capstone that was required by an accreditor for her specific program. And the students were struggling with it. So she took it, she broke that big capstone project down into small pieces and she made uh, interim due dates and she allowed them to submit drafts, gave them feedback, and then allowed them to resubmit. And she increased student success by double digits yeah. just by um, implementing uh, that simple measure. And our hat is off to her and all the faculty and staff at Central Carolina because they all come up with great ways to improve stu student learning. Well, and let me just add here that uh, it was a great college effort, the uh, entire accreditation process. Uh, but these two ladies that are our guests today were uh, just did a, a yeoman's work in, in pulling it all together and working with all faculty and staff to make it happen. And, and we can't thank you ladies enough for, for your tremendous efforts. And, it, and uh, Linda is our college's greatest cheerleader. Uh, she does a tremendous job in getting everyone excited, and we are so thankful to have both her and Stormy on our staff. Uh, we are so grateful to get to do this work. I like to say it's joyful work, and it truly is. We make it fun, but we also set the bar high, and um, we love it because we see that it makes a difference. And there literally were hundreds of, of people at this college and beyond who contributed to this effort, hundreds from all the faculty and staff um, doing these assessment reports and planning ways to improve to people who helped with the writing. And even our trustees, some of them came in and helped us to uh, review certain sections. And we ended up submitting tens of thousands of pages of documents. So it was a huge team effort and it really was a privilege and an honor and a joy to be a part of it. Well, we, we've talked about a number of things about the accreditation process, but what were some of the things that you learned and took away from this process? Um, well, I would say um, what I learned from it is reaffirmation is not a one office thing. As you know, you've mentioned and Linda mentioned, this took efforts college wide. Um, you know, we, we have a good bit of knowledge about the institution in general and the inner workings, but we worked with faculty and staff in every single department to get through this reaffirmation. So I learned an incredible amount about what some of our faculty and staff are doing that I didn't necessarily know before the process. So um, if there's one thing I want people to know is that reaffirmation and accreditation is absolutely college-wide. Um, and we're doing some amazing things at CC. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, you, your department does a lot of things for us here at the school, but obviously to receive this re reaffirmation must have been a joy and a delight for the two of you and your staff as you put so much time and energy into this important mission. And touch on that just a bit. <laughs> we did a lot of happy dances. <laughs> we did, and we celebrated really with the whole college. And we, we wanted the whole college to be proud um, because everyone contributed to this. But uh, you know, just a couple of things that stand out to me. We measure something called the student course success rate. That's something that Stormy does in institutional research the percentage of students who enroll for a class who stick with the class to the end and earn an A, B, or C. And just in the past few years, we have been able to implement initiatives that have raised that student course success rate by 10%. Wow. And we also raised the student persistence rate or the retention of students from year to year by 16%. Wonderful. So that's, that's a lot more students who are succeeding in their classes, who are learning, um, who are coming back and making it all the way to graduation. So that's what is the most rewarding, I think, about, about the whole process. The accreditation process establishes a foundation for that continuous improvement. Outstanding. Well, one area that you've worked toward is the Dream Keepers Fund. Hmm. What is Dream Keepers and how does it assist our students? We have found through um, the study of uh, student data and institutional data that there are many students who end up having to drop out of college 
just a class or a semester short of graduation due to an unexpected financial difficulty. It could be something as simple as with the hurricane, maybe their textbook got, uh, got soggy and they can't read it anymore, or they, they, they had a tire uh, go bad, they need a new tire, or something, maybe just $50 or $200 or something like that, very small amount. So uh, studies nationally found that um, just a few hundred dollars can make the difference in helping that student to overcome that financial impediment and stick with it to graduation. We ac actually had a, a student from our student government who, uh, very, very high performing, had to drop out one class shy. So this Dream Keeper Fund enables us to make these small grants. The maximum is $400. And it makes the difference between a student dropping out of college and working at McDonald's the rest of their life or sticking with college and finishing that last semester and graduating and moving on to have a career. So uh, it's very, very high impact. Uh, dollars and um, we appreciate it. Many of our faculty and staff donate to this fund. Our trustees donate to this fund. Lots of folks in the community donate to this fund and it really, really helps. So if you are interested in uh, giving toward that fund, if you get hold of London Stormy, I'm glad they'd be glad to talk to you about it as mm -hmm. a way of helping our students here at the college. Absolutely. Well, CCCC has become part of the Resilience Consortium sponsored and managed by Harvard University. What is the Resilience Consortium? The Resilience Consortium with Harvard is uh, a group of universities and colleges. Actually, there are only four community colleges across the country, and we're one of them, um, the only one in North Carolina, that's focused on helping, figuring out ways to help students build resilience to overcome life's difficulties. We find that many of our community college students have experienced more than their share of life's difficulties. And there's new brain research out that demonstrates without a shadow of a doubt that traumatic experiences that students went through in, in childhood have long-term negative effects. They can impact their physical health, their mental health, their learning, and uh, their behavior. So there are, but, but our, our initiative is about hope. It's about learning how to help these students and helping our faculty and our staff be most effective with these students. And, and really the foundation of it is providing uh, one caring, stable adult presence. And that's often a teacher uh, in, a in a student's life who's going through difficulty and that can make all the difference. So we are, uh, we're working with Harvard and we're working with these other universities and colleges to, uh, to build this, this program. Well, we've got less than a minute to go, but I do want to ask you, what do you think makes CC such a special school, Stormy? That's a great question. I think there's a lot of things that make CC such a great school. Um, we've got a really wide variety of programs um, for our students to take um, based on the needs of the community. Um, but also I think the faculty and staff. I don't think I've ever worked somewhere before where people are so passionate and so willing to make changes and search for improvement and continue to make things better. That's wonderful. Well, Stormy and Linda, it's been great having you on the show today, and we'll be right back with you with more Four City Visions. Morning, Gary. We are Get Schooled. Dot com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome, oh, I think we're breathtaking, and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. What? I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. Uh, chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to getschool.com for more info. And then from this angle, it all makes a star. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. So show up and, and frustration, a tool, not an obstacle. 
I make working hard seem easy. And giving up, impossible. And then we're gonna turn on the lights and everybody look up. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought. Five me one. What's your reaction gonna be? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And unconventional methods. Uh, okay, what else? Common. This is their world. I'm a teacher. I make more. Listen to me. I am captain of the track team. And, and if I'm late, she doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? <gasps> wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Well, yeah. I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. You're texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, is she texting me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. Welcome back to 4C Visions. Today, we welcome Ginger Harris, CCCC Early Childhood Chair. Ginger has been the department chair for early childhood for over 12 years, and she recently received the CCCC Faculty of the Year Award. A 2002 graduate of the Early Childhood Program here at CCCC, she transferred to UNC Greensboro to obtain her bachelor degree in Human Development and Family Studies. She then earned her Master's in Education from UNC Chapel Hill. Ginger lives in Sanford with her husband and son. Well, Ginger, welcome to 4C Visions. Thank you. I'm, it's an honor to be here. Well, Ginger, the Early Childhood Education Program at CCCC focuses on the needs of children from birth through age eight. Please share with our viewers some other general information about the program and the schedule for those who may be interested in the program. Sure, I'll be glad to. So our program is offer, offered both on the Lee campus and we have an online program. We offer several different options for students. We have three different associate degree tracks a diploma, and five different certificates. Wow. We have a certificate in infant and toddler care. We have one in preschool, one in school age. Then we have an administration certificate. And we also have a family home and early care certificate. Um, both or all five of our certificates can be completed in two semesters. Mm -hmm. And they are all embedded into our associate degree so that they're carrying those credits right over. We often encourage our students to do those in steps, to work on those certificates. We never know with our students, life happens, so maybe they can't finish when they think they can, but this gives them a mark so that they can um, go out and um, to the workforce and be marketable. Our early childhood diploma is a degree that can be finished in three semesters. Um, one of the benefits that that has, a lot of our students fear math. That's the dreaded course that they put off until the end. So our diploma does not have a massive requirement in that. So um, again, I encourage those students who are struggling maybe with math to go ahead and earn that diploma and then we can move forward. So we were very excited this is fall to be able to offer three tracks off of our early childhood associate degree. So one of those tracks is a career track. So that is geared towards those students who are just wanting to go out and get a job in the workforce. Um, that really have no interest in transferring and that they're just wanting it maybe to keep their employment or to just um, gain more knowledge. And then we have two additional tracks. One of those is a licensure track for those students who are um, coming in and they know they would like to transfer, they would like to get their birth to kindergarten teaching license and go to work in um, your NC pre-K classrooms, Head Start, um, that area. And then we have a non-licensure track and those are students who want to come in and transfer but they're not looking to go into a classroom maybe they're wanting to do uh, more with licensing consultant or go to work for um, some of the local agencies so this um, 
the, all three of these tracks started in the fall, and our transfer tracks will be accepted at any of the um, UNC systems that have an early childhood program there. So this is a, a great um, benefit for our students. It's a really great program, and I like the fact that you have so many options for whatever uh, time frame that people have for this. Right. Our goal is really for students to be successful and to become marketable out in the workforce. Well, one of the areas of the early childhood program that you must be excited about is the new lab for day students. What does that entail? Yes, we're very excited. This um, past summer, our program moved over to Let Hall, which um, the nursing program used to be in, and we have a dedicated lab space. So our students can now go in there during our class time. They can practice room arrangement. They can use the materials in there to um, carry out activities. They can practice what it would be like to set up and to read with students. Um, so it's a great benefit for them. Well, what community service opportunities are available for uh, early childhood students? So we've worked a lot with um, the agencies in our community to get them involved. Um, we do a lot of volunteer work with the Partnership for Children and the Coalition for Families and activities that they have um, focused around young children. Then we also have a class that requires students to go out and do a couple hours of volunteer work at an agency. You know, our goal is to get them as familiar as we can with the communities that they live in so that once they're a teacher and working with families, they can share those resources with families. We want them to have as much knowledge and um, as many resources as possible. Well, how is the early childhood program involved with the evening child care that is offered for actively enrolled evening students on our campus? Oh, I'm glad you asked. So our evening child care um, has really taken off. Um, it's a program for any student who's taken a night class and then while they're on campus, their child can attend free of charge. It's for children um, up to age or through age 12. We have um, students who are in the classroom to do their internship as well as we have a teacher and um, an assistant in there. So we have lots of um, adult eyes on the kids in there. But we use that classroom to um, allow them the opportunity to, to learn and their parents or caregivers attend class. And I've had a lot of calls this semester where it's, it's kept a lot of our students wow. enrolled um, that would otherwise, you know, they've lost childcare or you know, just different things have happened and, and they need our services. So um, we're really growing, but it's available for curriculum and con ed students. And certainly we would love, love to have anyone who's interested contact us. Absolutely. Well, with all the various programs that you offer through early childhood, what is the job market like for graduates of the program? They certainly do not have a problem finding a job. I get weekly calls from directors looking for qualified um, child care providers. There's a high turnover in our field and so there's just um, a constant need and then there's been a lot of push in some of our surrounding counties to do um, just to open free preschool for four-year-olds and with that um, they're estimating you know some of the counties needing up to 300 more preschool teachers within the next wow. couple of years. Wow, wow. So there's a lot of opportunities for anyone that uh, may be interested in this program. And so, Ginger, I'd ask you, what message do you have for anyone who may be interested in attending the program? Well, of course, as a graduate of our program, I think we have one of the top programs. Um, all of our faculty is very caring and supportive. We want students to be successful. Um, we work with them to create a career path and um, goals here so that they have a plan in place to be successful and to get to where they want to go. Um, you know, I would certainly encourage anyone who's interested to reach out to us, talk to us, and so we can set up a time to meet and, and just start working on what they need to meet their goals. And do you have a telephone number or email address that people could use to contact you? I do. My direct number um, is 919-718-7260. Um, Both my number and my email can be found on our college website in the directory there. Um, any of the early childhood faculty would be glad to help. And I would uh, welcome our audience, if you're interested, to visit our college website at www.cccc.edu and go to the early childhood page. Well, Ginger, we're so proud of you that you are one of our graduates and that you have been named recipient of the CCCC Faculty of the Award. 
And I just want to add that uh, reading through some of the material on Ginger's uh, award, uh, Ginger, you're known for being so helpful to so many students who may need just a little extra help or uh, I know that winning this award must be very gratifying, but talk a little about that, but also what makes for a good faculty member? Well, well thank you. I'm very honored to receive the award. I've been here um, over 12 years and I've had a lot of really good mentors during my time here who've um, taught me a lot of things. Um, but when I think about what makes a faculty member, someone who's caring and compassionate, this is a field where you really have to care about the students and want them to be successful and to succeed and you get just as much joy out of them receiving um, their goal and meeting it as um, as they do a lot of times but I think uh, you know a faculty you have to meet your students needs and be um, compassionate as well as just your teaching style learning to to teach where they are well and I'm sure that you run into a wide range of students who need different kinds of assistance. Talk a little bit about that. We do. We have a, um, a wide variety. You know, a lot of our students are working. They may be returning after staying at home with their kids and they have families at home. Um, we have a lot of military spouses in our program. So, you know, as faculty member, we have to be in touch with them and, and know what's going on in their life. And it's just as important for us to know those resources as it is for our students to help them get the resources they need to be successful. Yeah, well, and how many students do you have in the program right now? Right now we have um, around 300 students, I think, in our program, so um, it's a, a nice size program. And although you have that many students, you certainly have the uh, jobs out there, people we looking do. for these students, is that correct? We do, and a lot of our students um, are from across the state because of our online program, which is a nice addition um, to our online classes, we get different perspectives. Now, how does the online program work? So our online program um, is set up so that you have your assignments, you log in, we use um, Blackboard as our platform. You know, the assignments are there for you to do. There's due dates, um, we have discussion boards so that you have that communication with your fellow classmates and, um, you know, as an instructor, you're just as available for your online students as your seated students. Um, so it really is a great opportunity. A personal question here, why did you decide to get into early childhood? It was one of those things where the doors just kind of fell open. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, um, but I joined AmeriCorps right out of high school. And um, the AmeriCorps branch that I was in put me in an early childhood program, and um, I worked so that teachers could have relief time to go to class. And they paid for me to take some college classes and just kind of found my passion that way. Wow. What would you tell uh, our audience that, you know, maybe somebody's on the borderline about thinking, you know, that may be a good career. What would you tell them that maybe tip the scale so that they may be interested in the program? Well, I think for me, um, is just seeing the young kids whenever they learn. You see big differences in, in, that you make in their life. And um, so I think that just seeing that light go off in their mind or um, whenever you've helped a family um, I've loved working with families and made a lot of friends over the years, just helping them um, feel successful as a parent or family. Yeah. Well, as a graduate of the school, I think this question may be a little more special for you than uh, others, but what makes CCCC such a special place? I think there's lots of things. Um, but one of, I think, the things I'm most proud of about our college is that we have moved to a one college philosophy where we work together between curriculum and con ed and um, so that it's a seamless transition and so we can help our students who may be in our adult education program to transfer over into our program and um, but that we just all work together and um, it's more like a family than a job when you come here you build those relationships and I don't think everybody can say that about their job. Right. Well it's been a pleasure having you with us today once again, if you would like to learn more about the Early Childhood Program, I would invite you to look at our website. That's www.cccc.edu. And Ginger, if you would share your contact information one more time with our viewers. Yes, um, my office number is 919-718-7260. 
and uh, my email is g h a r r zero eight two at ccc.edu. Very good. Well, Ginger, we thank you for being with us again today. Congratulations thank on the you. award. You're certainly most deserving of that honor. And viewers, we look forward to being with you next time on 4C Visions.